Hey everyone, welcome to my SVG Goo Configurator lesson. Today I'm going to show you how to use this tool that will allow you to configure your Goo. We can get wildly different results based on the filter settings these sliders generate. You'll definitely want to watch my previous lessons so that you understand the basics of Goo and get the most out of this. With the right combination of settings, we can have this really thick goo, or we can sort of bring it down so that these drips get really thin and even disconnect at points. I'll show you how to bring your own artwork into this tool so that you can configure the goo that you need, or you can even copy the filter to your clipboard or check it out in the console. First, let's take a quick look at Boxy and see how this artwork was created. Oh hey, and real quick, if you could just take one second and like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would be a big help. Thank you so much. Here you'll see things look fairly plain. The text is relatively thin and it's been converted to a path. It sits on top of a rectangle and these drips here you'll notice are groups and inside the group you'll see there's a rectangle and an ellipse, okay? If I move over to this drip, it's also a group that contains a rectangle and an ellipse. Now for some of these, I may have taken the ellipse and stretched it out a bit inside the group. I may have selected the group as a whole and squashed it a bit and squished it. You know, I just played around with a few different ways to get a little bit of variance inside these drips. But the thing to note is that all of the groups contain rectangles and ellipses, and all of them have these inline styles of the fill that makes them gray, okay? So when I wanna change the color, I'm gonna to have to update that inline style of all those elements, and I'll show you how I did that when we jump on over to CodePen. So here's how it looks on a darker background, still with no filters applied, but first I wanna change the color of all these elements. So I'm gonna add this little magic GSAP set here, Ah, that brightens things up nicely. And you'll see we're targeting every rect inside of a G, every ellipse inside of a G for the drips, and every path. That handles the text. Now I was a little sneaky and I already have a filter reference on the group that has everything inside of it. So just here in the defs, I'm gonna paste in a goo filter. Ooh, nice and gooey. Now in the previous lesson, I showed you what happens when we change the blur standard deviation to something like 10 and clearly that made things blurrier. However, I was messing around with these last two values in the color matrix, and I would do things like take this 20 and change it to a 30. Ooh, that fattens things up a little bit. For this second value here, I tried things like, let's make that a negative two. Interesting. What happens if it's a negative 20? Ooh, look at how thin these drips get. I'm really starting to like this. However, I found after some time of just guessing at sort of random numbers, I would just end up with things that would just totally make the image disappear. Let's undo. And in my experiments, I kind of found that changing this number would be different depending on what this number was and vice versa. And even the amount of blur would affect how this number and this number work together. So instead of just throwing numbers out there blindly, I decided to build some sliders. However, in order to control just these two numbers in this matrix, I want to have some idea of what they actually were. So let's just hop on over to MDN Docs. Hey, what's up? Quick advertisement. This video is brought to you by my creativecodingclub.com students. They support me every month for as little as $2.95 to get a new fresh video like this from me every week, all right? Over the past three years, I've created over 200 green sock videos to help everybody go from beginner to pro. Whether it's the basics, making funny animations, banners, scroll driven, responsive, SVG, I've got it all. I worked at GreenSock for over seven years creating all their learning content and right now I'm taking everything out of my brain and giving it to you in the form of video. I've got loads of stuff here for free on YouTube, but I've also got so much more at creativecodingclub.com. Check it out, support the channel, and get everything I've created for one low monthly price. See you in the club. And here we'll see the FE color matrix definition, which contains text which says stuff like, each pixel's color value, RGBA, is matrix multiplied by a five by five color matrix to create a new color. 
I could read that 30 times and really not know what it means exactly. However, if we just skim down the page, you will see that the matrix is made of this grid. And you can see we have these RGBA rows here. And A stands for alpha. And if I go to those last two numbers here, they are A4 and A5. And those are pretty much the numbers in that long string that I want to be changing. If we go down here, we'll see the sort of multiplication that happens, okay? But still, we have A4 and A5 as the last two numbers. Um, there is this row here, but this says the last row is ignored because its values are constant, all right? So as far as we're concerned, the last two numbers are this A4 and A5, and those are the ones I'm gonna target with two of my sliders. Let me show you how. First, to give credit where it is due, my range input sliders came from this great smashing article from Alyssa Holland, all right? It's going to detail the anatomy of a slider and how to style it with CSS so that you get the same results in multiple browsers. I'm just gonna do a quick hop all the way down to the bottom here though where we have our conclusion and a link to the range input CSS generator. And now you can see the slider right here and you can change the style to use whatever colors that you want. And once you've configured it the way you want it to look, you can just jump down to this portion here and copy the CSS, which is exactly what I did. And I eventually ended up with a file like this, all right? So you'll see that I can increase the blur, I can increase the alpha four, decrease the alpha five, and I can just slide around to get something really like sort of ghosty and wispy, or I can crank everything up and we can get like this really sort of uh, fat goo, if you will, all right? get something like sort of horrible like that um, but there's so many fun different variations in between that I can just play with these sliders and here we get something let's move that blur up just a little bit and I kind of like it where these drips get really thin all right so we can just pull these down just a little bit we can go to the point where we actually detach the drops completely that's pretty interesting or we can just, you know, pull these numbers up just a little bit and get these sort of thin, gloppy, gloopy things hanging off, all right? So again, it's a lot easier than just like guessing with numbers in the code. We can just, you know, oh, that was too much. Let's bring that down and maybe bring this one up. And, you know, you probably want the words still to, ooh, that's kind of wispy, if you will, and ghost-like. But I think we can just get somewhere, maybe the blur down here and just, you know, come up with these really nice sort of semi drippy, goopy, gloppy things, okay? There's so many cool variations. But you'll have plenty of time to play around. I just wanna give you a little walk through the code and show you how you can use this stuff on your own. So first things first, over here, we have the SVG with goo filter in defs, all right? So this is basically an invisible SVG that's hanging out that only has a goo filter in it and whenever we mess with our sliders, we're gonna be changing these values in this filter. Scrolling on down, we have our input sliders and various containers, um, but you wanna look at the input and you're gonna see we have an ID of input blur for the top one, and then we have our input alpha four, and we're setting initial values, minimum, maximums, and steps for each. And the last one clearly is going to be our input alpha five. Where things get interesting, of course, is going to be in our JavaScript. Let's go to the top here. And here we're targeting the filters, all right? And those are the ones up here, okay? So blur filter and color matrix are in that top SVG. We'll give ourselves some more room here. And we're going to then set up our sliders for the blur alpha four and alpha five. And this is probably the only part that needs a bit of explaining. Here we have our base matrix, which contains all the values that aren't going to be changing, okay? Again, in the HTML, we're talking about all of these values right here, okay? So I'm just storing those in a string. And then we have our alpha four and alpha five, which are gonna be glued on the end. And we're gonna do that in our update matrix function. We're gonna create a new matrix, by gluing base matrix to alpha four and alpha five. And then we're just going to boom, plop that into the 
color matrix values. Here we have our slider code. All right, whenever a slider has an input event, we're gonna update the blur filter with this one. Alpha four and alpha five are going to be calling update matrix. So whenever we monkey with the alpha four filter, we're going to be resetting the alpha four value and then rerunning this code here, which glues it all together. And the same thing's gonna happen on the input alpha five. And I went ahead and I coded up the copy filter button so that whenever we click it, we can log out the goo filter and we can also copy it to our clipboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit wider here. And I'm gonna open up the console and there's already some stuff in here, but if I just click on copy filter, that all goes away and I'm left with the goo filter that has all the values that I need, all right? We have our blur of three and we've added on our alpha four and alpha five values that are taken directly from the current value of those sliders. And if I wanna use this filter on my own artwork, I already have it copied on my clipboard, so I can just jump into another SVG that looks all blocky like this. I do have the filter already applied to this group, but in my defs, I'm just going to paste it in. And now you'll see these blocks are gooey. And now you may be asking, well, what if I want to apply my sliders to this artwork? Well, what I'm going to do is just get rid of the filter here so I don't have any conflicts with my tool. And I'm going to select all of the SVG code, copy it out. I'll go back to my slider tool. And over here in the HTML, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to where we have add your SVG. I'm gonna collapse it, make it real easy to just select and delete. And now I'll paste in mine. Oh, and it looks like it overwrote my colors. That's fine, but let me just push that down. And now I can go super blurry, I can change the alpha four, and there it is, all right? So in real life, you may wanna get rid of my GSAP code that changes the color of all those things, but pretty neat, all right? So hopefully this makes it easier for you to get going with SVG Goo. So I encourage you, slap in some of your own artwork into this file, play with the sliders, and have some fun.